Karen. Yes. Guess what? What? Today we've got the ultimate secret weapon. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, what if I told you that there was someone out there who is a clandestine healer? Oh, that sounds secretive. Whose reputation precedes her because for many, many years she's been quietly working behind the scenes as a foresight consultant for high level government officials. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, on top of that, she's also a prolific healer. Mm -hmm. And she's here with us today. Awesome. Yeah, no, th this conversation is going to be so exciting. I cannot wait to share the amazing Robin with you when the show starts right now. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully. We both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hey, this is Will with a big question for you. Have you checked out the Skeptic Minute Edition's Inner Circle yet? I mean, if you like the show and the guests that we bring on, then you definitely want to be a part of this. See, the Inner Circle is absolutely free to join, and it gives you an opportunity to not only interact with Karen and I, but you'll also be able to engage with fellow listeners like yourself. Think of it as our own little support community. Now, community not really your thing? No worries. In our inner circle, you'll also find tons of discounts for services from some of our past guests so that you can check them out for yourself to see which path makes the most sense for you. But that's not all. We're also going to be doing a lot of great giveaways like free sessions from some of our guests. You can gain access to behind the scenes videos, even get the chance to be on the show with us. All the while, you'll be helping the show grow by letting people know about us. And did we mention it's 100% free? No hidden gotchas or ulterior motives, just plain community building and audience building and our way of saying thanks to you. Sound interesting? We thought so. Check out our show notes for the link to our inner circle and join today and then drop in and say hello and tell us what episode you heard this on. We might just give you a shout out on the show. Thanks for listening and hope to see you soon. Hey there, I'm Will. And I'm Karen. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Today, we're excited to have the amazing Robin. And they don't call her Amazing Robin for nothing. Like I teased earlier in the show, she's a clandestine healer whose reputation precedes her. For many years, Robin has been quietly working behind the scenes as a foresight consultant for high-level government officials, providing guidance and advice in preparation for catastrophic events. Ah, okay, I'm freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't freak out. Uh, her impressive client roster includes royal families, government officials, Hollywood elites, and global business leaders, all of whom keep her services under wraps like a prized secret. And we have her here today. So I, there's so much more to say about her, but I just want to bring her on because I couldn't be more excited. Robin, thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. Hi, guys. I love the title of your show because I'm a skeptic and I am supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you, the supernatural skeptic. The skeptic. Ah, I like that. I think it's a spinoff. <laughs> I think so. Maybe, maybe we're going to have to have Robin as a, as a third co-host. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the biggest question mark on everyone's ears right now as they're listening or watching this show is obviously catastrophic events like what what kind of things have you helped to avoid or circumvent you know what's funny is people always want to know of course but i could warn somebody all days long and they don't always take it they don't always do anything about it it's interesting you know people in tend to have a spiritual prompting for themselves and they don't listen either but i will talk about it professionally where my career kind of took like a turn was that big earthquake in Japan years ago where that big tsunami hit. I had positioned my partners about three days prior to that. I knew that there was an event that was going to take place in the area. And I was building um, survival communities at the time with some of the really big boys in the industry, bunkers and, and things like that. 
Mm-hmm. And so I had positioned them so much without going into detail, but it basically was very apparent and CNN got word of it and they wanted to know how the hell did they know? And they name dropped me and said, oh. you know, Robin Peterson, which my name is Robin Ruffner nowadays on divorce. Mm-hmm. But so that's how it took off when certain organizations or people or clients or however it works are asking for future events, it depends on why they're asking. What kind of client are they? I have some clients that just want to know about for themselves and their family. Some people want to know about their investments in the future, what to prepare for, which pathway to go, which one's going to have the the highest ROI. People want to know what to stock up on, what type of events might occur for them. So it's very, very different for everybody. Does that make sense? But the more that I can fine tune and have permission by somebody of authority, the more I can hyper focus. But then I also get random visions of the future. Like, for instance, when right before COVID happened, I sent a text message and I do this all the time to my students and my clients. And I said, hey, we're about to have a small earthquake in Utah. And then something's about to happen that is going to affect the whole entire world. And I don't know what it is. Wow. I just see it. I don't, I, I can't, it gives me chills every time I think about it, but yeah. I couldn't explain it. I, I didn't mm-hmm. see it as a virus. And now I know why looking back because I'm a holistic doctor and it wasn't really a virus. But when I was seeing it um, before it took place, I saw it affecting the whole entire world. And I'm like, what the heck is this? But what was interesting is that I saw that we would have a small earthquake right before. And if you guys mm-hmm. check it, you'll see that Utah had like a 6.7 earthquake in Salt Lake. And then COVID happened. And so, and then that's when it happened like that. Within two weeks, everything was shut down all around mm-hmm. the world. So, you know, that's the stuff I do. If I have prophetic stuff in the future or stuff today, promptings, warnings, I could be at dinner with my family and have a thought about a client that I haven't spoken to in 10 years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's about to kill himself. And then I'll leave dinner, call him. And I'm like, what's going on with you? And he's like, I can't believe you just called me. I was literally just about to kill myself. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's... I am willing to see the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm willing to see whatever is for me. That doesn't mean mm. that I see everything. It doesn't mean that I see every event, just like everybody else. Like we get told certain things for some reason. I don't know why. How young in your life did this start happening? Like when was the first, I guess, one of these events that you predicted that you were just like, holy cow, and you realized it wasn't just a coincidence that you actually knew this was going to happen? You know, as a kid, it was more about backstabbing friends. You know, I'd always have that intuition. But the Mm -hmm. first time was when I was sitting in the grass. I remember hyper-focusing on a squirrel and thinking, oh, there's something wrong with his vision. He's not going to see that branch and he's going to fall. And then he fell. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really knew. But I also thought that everybody else was that way. Right. Mm-hmm. And I and I started to wonder, like, is everybody else seeing things that I'm seeing? And, you know, and I started to ask a lot of questions. But really, it wasn't until my 20s, early 20s, where I really started to seek it out, really started to know for sure. Mm-hmm. And having it out with God, developing. The first time I really knew was I saw a flash flood in a vision. And it happened so fast that all these cars just got piled up and it happened, you know, people had no chance and, it was, and the flash flood was in Texas. But I was a early, you know, an, a young mom at the mm-hmm. time. I just had my first child. And when I saw that flood in the vision, I remember zooming in and seeing that there were three kids in the back seat, and the water just consumed the car. And oh. it really bothered me for days. Yeah. And then I saw. I saw it on the news a couple of days later and I saw that white car and then I knew wow. and I was pissed. I was super pissed for days. Like, why the hell would God show this to me? And why are you showing me things that I can't do anything about? And it was that moment when having an out and not mm. wanting to see the good, bad and the ugly, I turned off my, my gifts and my abilities and I didn't know. 
And that's a part of thing about when people have spiritual gifts is it's you have to master a skill set to be able to turn one thing off without the other. And that and that was a lesson that I had to learn. It's just like if somebody says, you know, I'd really love to be in love again, but I don't want to be hurt. I'm like, good luck being a lonely then. (laughs) <laughs> right. Right. because you don't get to select what happens you don't get to select what you're going to invite in you're either all in or you're not and right. spiritual gifts are the same way and typically mm-hmm. people don't have them because they're scared of what they might see so you've worked with big people right big people we talked about royal families and governments and uh, you just talked about bunkers and you know that usually happens with people who have big 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 <laughs> things how did they find you? How did you get involved? I, I mean, everything inside me is asking to ask you, oh my God, what royal families did you work with and things like that, but I'm not going to out of respect. However, I will ask you, how did you, how did they find you? how did you start working with these so, sort of, of people? You know, I have always been divinely led in a sense that being in the right place at the right time, things like that, going to big events, talking to a person, I have no idea who it is and I might mention something that I don't think is a big deal, but I'll say something um, to them. And and they're like, how did you know that? Or whatever. And then come to find out they're super influential or whatever Mm. it is, right? So that's how it lined up in the very beginning stages. And going to events and, you know, things like that where prime ministers were there and, you know, high profiled CEOs of very large corporations, things like that. And you only need one. For those that are looking for that breakthrough, just ask for the one, the one that will make the difference. Because if you are truly good at what you do, you only need the one. And then it'll spread like well, wildfire, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. And that's actually where my name Amazing Robin came from is that people would introduce me as that, oh my God, you got to meet Robin. She's amazing. And that's how it, and <laughs> people just started introducing me that way. And it's not that I have an ego. I think we're all amazing. I don't think you know, there's anything special about me. I teach people how to develop their own spiritual gifts way even better than mine these days. So everybody can have it. It's just that I develop mine. I seek it out. I'm trained and I work on it every single day. And I would say because of what you've already told us, your amazing moniker fits perfectly. So just own it, Robin, just (laughs) go with it. (laughs) Absolutely. I will embrace it. So when you, you turn, you said you turned your gifts off. How long was it until you decided to step back in. Well, it was funny. I think it was about a year or so later, I had realized that I hadn't had any prophetic dreams. I used to dream about like what people would call like the second coming or the great reset, you know, a lot. I've been Mm -hmm. dreaming about that, that whole time period since I was probably nine or 10 years old. And I realized I hadn't had any of those dreams in a while. And so I was talking to God and I'm like, hey, like I haven't had any of those dreams. And he's like, I get this remembrance of that day where I was like, stop showing me the shit. Right. And <laughs> so, so, I just give you what you wanted. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, and so it's really one of those things like I get a download or a thought and then I inquire. OK, well, what does that mean? Like, teach me, mentor me. What, what? And so that's where it came to be that I realized I had to accept it all. And Mm -hmm. so then I, once I understood what it meant, I was willing to accept it all. Right. And, you know, through the years, I've had a lot of training, a lot of different things. I've been in different fields for a long time. It was all about survival, training, catastrophic events, bunkers. I became a sniper. I became a firearm instructor, survival instructor, emergency medicine, so that I could advise properly and really know what it is. So anything I saw in the future that I had a fear for, I would train for it. And then I would be able to advise for it better. Then I also became the doom and gloom girl. You asked the question before you shut your gifts off. The question was, why are you showing me things that I can't do anything about? Did you ever get an answer to that question? Yes, I've had that answer several times Hmm. because it's more important to know how in tuned you are. It's not always about what you can do or who you can save or helping others like a lot of people believe. It's more about getting to know who you are and what you're capable of. When people say things like, I'll ask someone like, what's your life purpose? And they're like, I just wanna serve the world and help out and and give back to, to others. And I'm like, that's a pretty 
fucked up frequency, to be honest, <laughs> because what you're saying is that the world is broken. This person is broken. You're better than them. Let me fix you. Let me help you. That means something's wrong. And people sending out information like that through the quantum field, which quantum physics is my specialty, creates weak weakness in them and weakness in the world. When you start to see them on their own personal journey or the world perfectly fucked up the way that it's supposed to be, that's more powerful. So it goes back to this is not about me helping, saving, doing whatever it is. This is also about me learning who I am and what my gifts are, how in tuned I am. Now, if I can do something and I meant to, then I will and it shall be. That sounds similar to some of the guests I'm thinking of Benji talking about like manifesting and when you want something, you, you're manifesting that want, not the actual thing. So you have to imagine what it's like to already have it. So if you're thinking that you need to help people, you're probably maybe manifesting more people that need help other than helping them. Is that somehow? Well, I, I don't know. So here's where I'm <clears throat> conflicted on that thought process because in a very specific way, the reason this show is here is because of our desire to help people to come to terms with some of these messages. People like you who have very strong messages that, that you want to share with folks, we're helping you get the message out. We're also helping the people that are listening or watching to the, the show to, to get in touch with those messages and learn something from it. Is that, mm -hmm. is that not what we're supposed here's, to be thinking? Here's the difference. People that are coming to your show are seeking it out. They're inquiring of the information. Oh, People who come it. to me directly are seeking. They're looking for that type of help versus me having some kind of life purpose attached to things and people and events that I'm not even attached to, believing that them currently and in the future are broken and need healing and need help and need my help. It's a savior complex, which means... I'm sending out weakness to the world. I'm saying that the world needs saving. Do you see the difference? I can go to a grocery store and see why somebody has cancer. I can walk by them and I know why they have cancer. And trust me, in the early years, I would say something because I thought God gave me this gift and I'm here to help. Gotcha. You know how many people ever, out of all of the people for years and years that I offered assistance to give my all to? Because I'm also a holistic doctor, I'm an herbologist, I'm a healer, I have all these other abilities. I would offer my all to them for free to help them. Do you know how many people took me up on that? Zero. Wow. Wow. And the reason why is because I'm trying to, there's good manipulation and bad manipulation. And when people have gifts and they want to help the world, it's a form of good manipulation, but it's also a form of, let me show you my worth and my value. Let me, let me show you what a good person I am. Let me show you all my gifts. Let me show you how I can do things and how good I am and all of those things. And they don't realize that they're doing that, but it also comes from a subliminal baggage of, let me show how worthy God I am, or mm. let me show God how worthy I am. Right. Let me prove my worth. So it's more about throwing yourself or forcing yourself onto someone versus having someone come to you and ask for your assistance. Yeah. If somebody came to me, I'm all the day long, I'll, I'll be right there. But there needs to be an exchange of information. Now, if you guys were blasting your, your thoughts, your opinions, your shows to everybody and forcing them to watch, that would be very different. But people are finding you in a pathway that's perfect for them because that's what they're needing and wanting at the time. That's perfect. And that's beautiful. So like when people are wanting to help or fix the world or help others, you know, should, they should really have the thought that I will be there at the perfect time for the perfect people, that we will be in a perfect alignment. So everything becomes optimized in our meeting. That's yeah. very different. And that also has a lot more power versus I'm right, you're wrong. Let me fix you. You're broken. Mm -hmm. And so people are looking at the world that way. They're looking at people that way. They're looking at the homeless that way. They're looking at victims that way. And it does not empower them. That's all. Oh, that is a very interesting perspective. Yeah. That heard before. I don't think anyone's ever said that. Mm -mm. No, no. Wow. So it, it's fascinating. And it's something that we've never really thought of before. But you do bring up a point that I have to call out because I'm really curious what your thoughts are. 
Everyone talks about the division in the country and all that kind of stuff. Do you feel that that is exactly how it's supposed to be? Or is there something that we're supposed to stand up for and help change that perspective? When COVID happened, I do these lives every time I'm concerned about something with my students and my clients. And I had told them that COVID is practice for what is coming and you need to pay attention. There is a great shift and a great divide that's taking place. And you need to pay attention to the way that your neighbors are treating you, the way that your family's treating you, how citizens are behaving, how the government is behaving. Yes, there is a reason for that. Even all things that are being used for manipulation or what some Christians might call sin will always be used for the greater good too, right? Because they're in perfect harmony with each other. So the great divide, the awakening that people are taking place, the the rise in our spirits and our minds to want to fight back is natural and good and purposeful. Now, just like in the scriptures, they talk about the great and dreadful day, but the original scripture said the great or dreadful day. So it's great for some and dreadful for others, depending on where you are and what you're seeing, what your perspective is. So there is no right or wrong. And that is really where people have a huge paradox shift that they need to have. It's just like if we go back to COVID, if some people believed in masks and some people didn't, but they were both correct. I could give you 20 facts on why masks won't work, but they could give me 20 facts on why they do. So it's not about what we need to do collectively to change something or fix something. Because whatever pathway you're going on and collectively the people who are on that same pathway, this is either going to be great for you or it's going to be great for them or it's going to be dreadful for them or dreadful for them. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. If this is what you want to believe in and you want to fight back and create a revolution in this government, hell yeah, bring it on. But does it mean that you should or we have to? No, but maybe there's going to come a day very soon where it's going to be on your front doorstep and you will have to make a choice. But does it change anything in your trajectory? The destination always stays the same. It's either you want the fast track or the slow track. I hear everything you're saying, mm-hmm. and I'm, I think I understand everything that you're saying. But then whether you're on one side or the other, and we actually very specifically are not on either side. We have chosen to just be who we are and not follow one path or another. Perfect. We have heard that everything is absolutely in perfect order and that things in the world are exactly as they're supposed to be. And rather than fight on one direction or another, we are supposed to just accept that it is in perfect order and just allow everyone to be who they are and do what they want to do because everything's gonna work out exactly as it's supposed to. Then we have the other side of the coin where people come on the show and say, hell no, these are archons who are trying to prevent us from ascending and we need to fight to make sure that we don't let them win. So is one camp or the other correct? Or is there someone in the middle that we aren't missing? People assume if I am right, then you have to be wrong. They are both correct. And what the issue is here is that people have no idea why they're here, why they came to earth, who they were before this world and who they're going to be next or where they're going after this. They're told that this is their first rodeo. We have one chance to prove everything. We better get it right. And this information is highly incorrect. When really there are people here that have had thousands of lives, having thousands of human experiences and could be very far along in this journey. So they are choosing with their own free and will and choice to be on one spectrum or the other. The homeless guy who decided to be homeless and be schizophrenic and have addictions knew that before he even got here. The homeless kid, I mean, the starving kid in Africa watching their parents be brutalized in front of their eyes knew that before they got here. So to sit here and say that one is more correct than the other is a very human tunnel vision way of looking at the world. And when people think that they need to fight back, that something is against them, that the adversary is out to get them, that is from their own shit. That's their own programming. And then when they start to believe that in their subconscious mind, like attracts like. So then they will align with other people that will confirm what's going on in their subconscious mind. And they'll keep accepting and and gathering evidence, okay? For instance, it's the same thing when somebody has cancer. When somebody comes to me and they have cancer, first of all, when somebody gets on a call with me, they're never allowed to tell me why they're calling. All I want is your name and then I have permission. I'm going to give you an example. If I tap in and I can see that they're sick, 
I'll test their life energy and I'll see that it's extremely low. So immediately I will test their subconscious mind to see if they even want to live and they never do. And then I'll say, I'll test the quantum field and their timeline. And I'll say, when did this start happening in their mind? When did they start wanting to not be here? And I'll go back in time and I'll say, you were 19 years old. You said to yourself, I don't want to do this shit anymore. I'm wasting away. I've been betrayed and I don't want to do this anymore. I said, what was going on with you? This is when you decided you didn't want to live. And now you're in stage four cancer in your 40s. But this started when you were 19 years old. And he's like, I can't believe you said this to me. I've never told anybody this story. I just got in high school or just out of high school, the American football dream, just got a college um, scholarship to play football. And I shattered my back so bad that I was in traction for two years in the hospital. My fiance betrayed me and cheated on me, but I was wasting away in the hospital. They couldn't even operate. I was in traction for two years lost everything. And I didn't want to be here. And I didn't want to do this shit anymore. So that now got programmed into the subconscious brain, never corrected it. So the subconscious brain's always in control. So now it has to find evidence over and over again to prove itself right, even if it's wrong. And now he has cancer. So what I'm saying is, is that everybody is correct. It's very rare that we can sit here and debate and argue and I can prove something wrong or prove you wrong or whatever it is. It's really when you are in a place where you're going to decide that, hey, you know what? This isn't uplifting. This doesn't make sense to me anymore. This doesn't serve me. I don't want to live this way anymore. That's when new information comes in. But when you're looking at the spectrum of people that need to rise, take over the country, do the right thing. All the, I mean, yeah, they're 100% correct. This is bullshit what's going on. But the other people that say, hey, it's perfectly fucked up, that's true too. It's not like one person to say, hey, like you're supposed to be one or the other. It's like, this is free will and choice. Choose what kind of journey you want to have here in this world. So then how do you do that? How do you, what is the path to move forward? Do you just surrender and let whatever happen happen? Or do you try to make a conscious choice? And if you do that, is that then the wrong thing to do? I think it really has to do with opening up your spiritual antenna and being guided. You know, our whole lives are about experience and why we came here. So again, I can have a fast track or a slow track. So if I'm a starving kid in Africa and watch my parents be brutalized, and that was the human experience I came here to have, do I need to have that experience for 70 years? Or do I gain that experience? Could I have it in maybe five years? So this is what the true definition is of awaking, being woke, understanding, spiritual awakening, going into the 5D. When you really understand this information, this is when you can change everything and manifest anything because now I'm in control. I had that experience. Now I can do anything else I want. I don't need to stay in this experience for 70 years. So then... Before we started recording, we tar started talking about <clears throat> a mishap that I had in Europe and how the universe is telling me to slow mm -hmm. down <laughs> and I should have learned the lesson before something so drastic happened. Perhaps that's something that I should have learned the first time is what we're talking about. I know it's, I'm making light of it. There's, it you're talking about much more serious stuff. I'm talking about a broken ankle, but. Same, yeah. So. It depends on your learning process. Do you want to learn through experience and force like m the majority of us? The majority of us are that way, right? And that's a very gentle way of like our spirit family or God or our celestial family teach us and show us things. They're like, hey, we've been telling you spiritually and prompting you very subtly that, hey, you need rest or hey, you need to chill out. And you won't listen. So now we're going to break your ankle. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us don't. So this is why something I've been thinking, I, I tell myself all the time and I speak it to existence, like I'm ready to learn through success. I'm ready to learn through absolute bliss because mm. this is where I'm like, damn, this is where it's at versus the rug being pulled out under me, being portrayed, being lied to, challenges and failures. And that's where the majority of the world has learned from, right? But you get to a point where like, you know what? I've come pretty far now. I just want the other side. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just want the other side. <laughs> yeah. I really do. So, and it's really up to us, which, which, how fast, how slow you want it, right? I always say people like, do you want to be better now or do you want to be better later? You want to be rich now or do you want to be rich later? Uh, uh, now, please. 
Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so then uh, we, we got to take a break, but we got to, we got to remember this conversation because when we come back, I want to, I want to follow up on that because it's, it's wonderful to hear that. And you know, that we are right on there. Like we want it to learn from success, not the other side of things, but how, how in the world can we change our mindset because it has been programmed for so long into this way of thinking? How do we change that? And have us learn from success versus broken ankles. Don't answer that. We'll get your answer as soon as we get back from these messages. Stay with us. All right, before we get back to the show, I wanted to share a message that we got uh, by email from Pamela Good. It it touched me a lot and I just, I don't know. I just feel like someone out there will benefit from listening to this as well. Pamela Good emailed us this. She said, I am weeping as I type this. Thank you so much for your episode regarding trauma. Will your vulnerability and courage in speaking about your experience hit me so deeply in the heart? That was our family. Where my older sister and I traumatized our younger siblings acting out of a pain we didn't realize we were holding. Susan Gold She was right. Your raw confession affected more people than you may realize. God bless you and Karen and your thoughtful podcast. Pamela, you have my deepest appreciation for sending us this message. I don't know if I've ever been that open before on the show, and I was frankly quite scared as to what what the reaction was going to be. So uh, getting this message from you really helps me to uh, feel better about being that that vulnerable with the audience. Uh, Okay, well, I I can't thank you enough for sending this to us. Uh, And if you'd like to hear your message or your review read on the air, do like Pamela Good did. Go ahead and send us an uh, an email or go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review there. Uh, If you leave us a five-star review, it will go a long way towards providing social proof that uh, this show can actually go places that would help some folks heal from trauma and all kinds of things. So Pamela, thank you again once more for the thoughtful email and for taking the time to do so. You didn't have to do that. And I really appreciate you taking the time to doing it. So, all right, let's, let's go ahead and get back to the show. Welcome back to the Skeptic Minimization. We're talking to the amazing Robin and we, things are getting hot and heavy because right before the break, we're talking about making better choices, for lack of a better word, being able to decide to learn from successes versus disappointments like broken ankles in Europe, right? So we talked about the importance of doing that, but it's easy to talk about it. Now, can you give us a quick and easy way to change our mindset so that we no longer have to learn from broken ankles and instead learn from successes. I'm trying to give you the most simplest way for people who don't have skill (laughs) set and people who possibly don't have any money. Okay. So no money, no options, no skill sets. I think I fit into all those categories. What I would say is they need to experiment verbally with something that is supernatural. So People who are Christians and believe in God or Muslim and believe in God or whatever it is, okay? And then you have some atheists or you people who are agnostic or they believe in something that's just higher, they call it source of the universe, okay? let's We can always fine-tune that in a second if you want, but sure. let's just say that something supernatural exists. You don't really know what it is. Totally fine. Be bold enough to experiment with it. But what I will tell you is that verbalize it be loud, be authentic and say, look, I am done doing this. I don't like this shit anymore. I obviously have a pattern. Let's just say you keep picking guys that are shitty, narcissistic. You're always giving and giving. They're always taking and taking. Okay. Let's just say women have a pattern. When you start to see that you have a pattern in your life, this is what you want to do. Whether it's in your career, sexually, mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is, we all have these patterns and you'll keep repeating this pattern until you get it. So once you realize there's a pattern and you're like, I don't know how to break this pattern, this is when you verbalize an experiment. I'm done with this shit. I don't want to do this anymore. Do whatever it takes for me to never repeat this cycle again. Let this be hard enough and big enough to where I will never repeat this again, that I can learn from 
success, that I can learn from discernment, learning from what is safe, secure with pure growth versus, oh, well, let me just see how it goes. I met this guy. He seems really nice. I have seen some red plaids, but maybe I can change him. That's the old pattern. Let me truly see now. Let me have eyes that see, but a mind that will act. So it's very specific in the words. It's very specific in experimenting. I always tell people like, put God to a test, put the spiritual realm to the test. And I, and I will be so bold that if I start to step into that pattern again, I ask for something very dramatic to happen to me. I don't care if I get hit by lightning. I will never want to put myself in this position again. So how bold are you? So theoretically, if someone, every time they went on vacation, something catastrophic happened to ruin the vacation, you would think that's a pattern. Yeah. We all got the very similar issues. It's just some people are willing to learn a little bit faster. They're willing to mm -hmm. raise their capacity. Like, I'd love to give you an example about, you know, how we were talking about like which side is true and people is assuming that if I'm right, then you're wrong. You have to be. We can't both be right. Mm -hmm. But let me explain that a little bit. Okay. This is a lot about quantum physics. And for instance, it's like Christians arguing about which God is correct, which scripture, which church, which religion, right? I mean, we've created genocides over this for hundreds of years, okay? Right. Arguing about who's right. So for instance, if I read a scripture and I get revelation on what the scripture means, and I know I'm having a personal spiritual experience with it, right? I know God, he's speaking to me a certain way. And then I share it with somebody else and they're like, that's not what that means, right? That's a problem. Like, this is where this comes in, okay? Here's how it works. We know the law of physics. If I throw a ball up, gravity, and we know gravity, that the ball's going to come down. We don't necessarily, not everybody understands how. We just know that it is. But then there are some people that have a higher capacity to understand physics, meaning they created planes. They logically could build them and defy the laws of physics and fly. Mm -hmm. Not everybody understands how planes work. They just know they do. Then there are some people that really have a higher capacity to receive information, understanding, break things down. Then they could build shuttles and go to space. Now, those people don't counteract and make the law of gravity untrue, do they? No, no. <laughs> no. They just have a... They have a higher understanding or a different understanding. doesn't make them better or worse or right or wrong. They're both correct. It really depends on the capacity of your understanding, the capacity of what your brain is ready or willing or capable to understand. See, that was a perfect example. It was. That was fantastic. It was. And I will never cease to be amazed at the timing of all of our interviews. What do you mean? What just happened two days ago with your mother and I. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about that too, but I didn't think you were talking about that. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, I shouldn't it, edit this out. Let's talk about it. <laughs> uh, we had a difference of opinion mm -hmm. and I felt that she was being closed off and not willing to look at possibilities. And that set me off for some reason. It was insulting to me that she wouldn't at least research and educate on the, on the topic of the whole thing where based on what you're saying, and it makes perfect sense because afterwards when I went back downstairs and apologized, it did make, make perfect sense that my reaction was the problem because she was not in the place where she was ready to look at something for whatever reason. And it was not my place to try to force her to look into something when she wasn't prepared for it. Correct. That's a very fast epiphany you had there. I'm very proud wow. of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you too. Wow. Well, yeah, that Thank was you. great. I hope and he's listening. This is, this is huge. I see this all the time. It's like people get really frustrated when they're not willing to learn, when they're not willing to seek, and they're not at the capacity that you are. And I see this with husband and wives or married couples, domestic partners, business partners, and it's such a frustration. And I, I'd like to explain that a little bit. You know how Christians and religious people all over the world have the scripture talking about being damned? What do you guys think that means? Well, if you if you go by the letter of the scripture, if you are religious sort, being damned means you're destined to go to hell after you right. die, huh? Right. But that is man's manipulation, especially in the English language. I was a gospel teacher for like 15 years. I like deep, deep doctrine. Here's the truth. When it was referencing people being damned, it was talking about water rights. It was referencing 
the potential of the soul of how we got here to earth. So when people come here, they're like a powerful raging river. They can carve the earth. They can be destructive. They can be beautiful. They can be calming. One drop of water can expand to the rest of the world through the pathways. But every powerful dam or every powerful river can get dammed up. Now, whether it's man-made or natural, it doesn't really matter, does it? Lightning can hit a tree and that tree falls into that river and it starts to divert, slows it down. Mm -hmm. Now, all the debris floating down river can get caught up on that original log. This is people being damned up. It was never talking about people being condemned or going to hell. That is man's manipulation. It is letting you know how people are not changing, how our in-laws and how our parents and how our family members and neighbors that are in their 60s and 70s that are miserable, but yet they've never changed. They're listening to the same thing, same music, eating the same foods, dressing the same, doing the same things. It's because they're damned up way back there. <laughs> Even a river who gets dammed up can still move forward. There's still, there's still life in the river. Mm -hmm. It either got diverted or slowed down, but they're just not as powerful as they once were. So this is what I do, is when somebody gets on a call with me and they give me permission, give me their name, in three seconds, I see where that dam is, where it started, why it started, what they said to themselves, and I can remove it. And then I free them up and everything comes into flow. Such a game changer. So basically you're saying that humanity is at different levels of damnation. Yes, <laughs> that was good. Ah. Nice. <laughs> well, we just got to have a caption of what that means before we <laughs> Yeah. I think we found the title of a show. <laughs> That's going to be it. I like it. I like it controversial. You know, I... I yeah. I tell you, I've had some supernatural experiences and as a gospel teacher and thinking that I knew God for so long, and then I have one, just one supernatural experience in two seconds, I was like, damn, all of this is false. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You can't just drop that on the show and not at least give us an example. Ooh. <laughs> it's like, <sighs> <laughs> well, you know, I... I don't talk about it in great detail, but I, I'll say a couple things. My very first experience, I had a face-to-face a -face encounter with God, or who, what people call God, or Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And I was a gospel teacher, and I was a good gospel teacher. You know, I was really, I taught very well. I was very interesting, things like that. I had a really great relationship with God. I prayed all day long, you know, and read my scriptures and studied and did all the right things. One time I had this face-to-face -face encounter. Now my physical body kind of went into, it felt like a seizure. It was very physically painful. Oh, wow. But my mind was in awe. So I didn't care about the physical pain. I was just in awe. Some people would say you, I went into the eternities or you could call it a dimension, a celestial dimension. Everybody has different definitions mm -hmm. in lingo. Okay, So I always try to use three of them so people can comprehend. <laughs> So in two seconds of having this encounter, this face-to-face, -face, and it went on for quite some time, but just in two seconds, I saw that the majority of what I thought about God, what I was teaching about God and religion, and what the world thought to be about God was false. In the most simple ways, because of how casual, neutral God was, how unified Meaning, so for instance, are you guys married? We are. Yes. Okay. When you guys are unified, is one better than the other? She is always better than me. <laughs> That's the right answer? <clears throat> That's the right answer. Okay, good. <laughs> is she, is she a answer. superior, is she a, like a superior supreme being above you and authority and judgment and everything else? There is, no, I understand what you're saying. At that moment, it's more about unity. So something that is completely unified with you, you will see that you are almost equal to each other or you're pretty close, right? Partnerships sure. become pretty close. Sure. And there is no judgment. You know, when you truly love someone, you love them unconditionally. You love their darkness just as much as their light. Isn't that what marriage is about? We're getting to a place where I can handle you pretty well more than anybody else in the world. I see your flaws, I see your sins, I see your darkness, and I love on it just as much as your light. God is very similar. There is no judgment. There is no right or wrong. It's just appreciation of 
the journey, the experience. And there's no golden throne. And this isn't the first time you're here. Pretty much everything that's taught in this world about religion and spiritual stuff is pretty false, really. I'm just giving you like one little thing, but there's mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it, you know, it's hard. It, you know, my first experience with that, it actually took me over two years to process. It shook me at my core. I had to relearn yeah. everything. And it was devastating. Devastating. Right. I had nobody in the world to talk to. And I could imagine because you were a gospel teacher, you were feeling that you were promulgating that falsehood, mm -hmm. which would then have affected you even further to yeah. make perfect sense. Absolutely. And now I had lost my whole community. I couldn't even go to church anymore. Ooh. The pictures on the wall of right. God or of Christ, all these mm -hmm. things, the scriptures, all mm -hmm. I saw was the falseness, mm -hmm. the manipulation, the control, yeah. the fear. The baggage, the trauma that it was causing, right. the repulsiveness. Well, earlier on, you mentioned that some of the words in the scriptures were man's manipulation. I would probably go a step further and think that sometimes some of our religions was man's manipulation of humanity. If you want to go down that road, don't get us wrong. We're, we're not a basher of religion. We feel that if it works for you, then we're wholly supportive. Dude. Unfortunately, that there are some folks out there whose goal was to instill fear and control. control. And unfortunately, religion has been a tool for that type of manipulation for a very long time. And it feels like some of them have lost their way. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand what you're, what, you're, what you're saying and you're preaching to the choir to a large extent. You know, what's interesting is one time God gave me this huge epiphany and lesson once. So I, I mean, I've had so many. Because I'm always having it out with God because I'm a brat. <laughs> just, to, just so you guys are clear, there is nothing special about me, but I am a brat. I have it out with God all the time. But anyway, one day we were having this talk and I said, you know what? I am to a point where I'm not doing all this shit anymore. I'm not paying tithing. I'm not going to go serve. I'm not doing all these things so that I'm worthy of the blessings that I, re I re am seeking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Basically, he said, I, I said, basically, I am seeking blessings that I'm never going to deserve. That's how that's who I am now. I'm I want to receive things that I don't deserve. Because in my mind, I'll never deserve it in this human subconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the catch 22 here in this whole religion thing. Okay. Doesn't matter how righteous I become, how clean, pure I become, how good my connection with God is, I can always do it better. That's right. a catch 22. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I got to that place, I said, I'm done and I'm going to experiment with you and I'm going to try to prove this right. Because he said to me, you are who you believe God is and I am who you believe you are. So if you are racist and you think gays are going to go to hell, you believe God is the same. Right. You feel supported in yeah. that, justified in that. He said, if you want to be a person who receives blessings, even when they don't deserve it, then bless people when they don't deserve it. But then that makes me confused because then isn't that sort of like trying to help people without them asking for your help? Yeah, they're asking you for help and they don't deserve it. And I, at the moment when we were having this conversation, I said, oh, of course, I, I'm totally willing to do that. And he said, really? What about so-and-so? And I had just said the day before, I'm done. I'm not helping them anymore. They have screwed me over for the last time. And he put me on blast, basically. <laughs> And I was like, you're right, 100%. So whoever, mm -hmm. you know, it was a huge lesson for me, but whoever I am is who God is to me, not just in my thinking and our connection, but also mm -hmm. the way that I receive, because it's a principle of the quantum field. Like, for instance, if I don't, if I would love to be in a relationship and be loved and married, but I'm not willing to be hurt or betrayed, then I have a block. I can't give or receive love. Which means I can't also receive a partner, but I also can't give and receive love from God either. So I'll keep praying and praying and praying, and I never really feel God. I never really feel God's love the way that everybody else is saying they feel it. And then I'll give up. So there's a connection. How you're thinking and seeing the world is also how we're thinking and receiving to spiritual and supernatural things. So whatever it is that you want or you're seeking, just become it, and then it will be returned. And that that mirrors some of the things that we've heard from other mm -hmm. people where they say, if you want to be blessed, then bless others. So it, it, it does make a lot of sense. 
in that sense of things. But if others wanted to reach out, get in touch, work with you one-on-one, or uh, I know on your website, you offer healing sessions and one-on-ones and and you work with people, what's the best way to reach out to you? So I have a team that works with me. The best way is always just go through my website. You can email or even text or call me or my assistant. We'll get right back to you. It just depends on Sometimes for months out of the year, I'm with the, the private sector, but right now I'm in the public sector. I, I take off like six months to do this, six months to do that. Right now, my biggest thing right now is I'm teaching people how to develop the spiritual antennas to become like me or way better than me. Everybody can have it. Everybody has gifts. Everybody can have prophetic dreams, visions, revelations. Everybody. It's a God-given right. It's a spiritual supernatural right. You just need to learn the spiritual protocols. You need to increase your natural levels of DMT in the brain. You need you need to know what kind of questions to ask and how to get multiple confirmations that it's real. Everybody needs confirmation. Blind faith does not exist, and this is not a time for it. <clears throat> so I can develop that in pretty much anybody, and that's what I do. I train people. So I have retreats coming up, but people who need healing where they feel like they've been hitting their head against the wall, doing all the right things and all the gurus and, you know, motivational speakers and church and preachers just aren't cutting it anymore. You Mm -hmm. need to go within and you need to learn how to do it so that you never need somebody like me or a guru again. And these retreats that you're talking Mm -hmm. about, you've got some coming up and that's, that's where you help develop stronger the DMT in, in people at these retreats and things like that. So I assume that information will be found on your website or how can someone learn more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Go to my website. It's amazingrobinwithay.com. Okay. So perfect. you guys can reach out anytime. Anything you need help with, just reach out. Me or my assistant will always get back to you. I do free readings and live readings all the time on my social media. So you can always follow me there. It's either going to be Robin Amazing or Amazing Robin. And just look for that if you're looking for some free work too cool all right well we're gonna add those links directly to our show notes so if you miss this didn't have enough time to run and get a pen to write that down don't worry we can you know just go to skepticmanifestation.com go to her episode page you'll see those links directly there so it's just one simple click and you're connected with robin once again robin amazing time talking to you today thank you so much for your wisdom and and for your patience as we try to get you on the show so (laughs) it's been great guys thank you you asked some really good questions and i appreciate that a lot we'll talk again soon thank you thank you you betcha and a huge thank you to you we know that there are tons of options out there and having you decide to come along on our journey of discovery with us is an absolute honor for us If you know someone who would benefit from hearing the message we're sharing on the show, do them and us a favor and share the show with them. It will help get the word out about us and it might just change someone's life for the better. Well, that's all for now. We will see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care.